going to hit the last topic. Someone is mad at the internet. And I know, look, I know already this topic is going to rankle a few people. And to you, I say simply, I love you and I respect you. I understand you'll be upset about this, but it needs to be said. It really does need to be said. So let's do it. There's a concept on the internet called being mad at the internet. And uh, a, a person who is very, very um, keen on using the term, even the title of his show, is Joshua Moon, the owner of Kiwi Farms. Now, people are going to hear this and say, Nick is mad at Josh. Nick hates Josh. I do not. I'm not mad at Josh. I don't hate Josh in any way. Uh, I think Josh is an important person. I've said this forever. I think he's a critical juncture of free speech and the limits of that free speech and protecting it. And he's worked tirelessly and often, often he has worked uh, uh, with, with no regard for his own self, his own image. And he has not been rewarded for his stalwart defense of free speech online. He runs a forum that is called a hate forum that is accused of driving people to suicide, which I do not believe, that is accused of uh, routinely online violent threats, um, that is accused of being evil and doxing, which, of course, doxing occurs on Kiwi Farms. I will maintain that I think, as much as I don't like doxing, I, I, it seems to be protected speech. It seems to be protected speech. And yes, I have been doxed. And yes, people have used that dox to cause me harm, but I don't think the people who doxed me did it. And I think that's important. So, with that said, though, there's a concept that Josh propagates. It's the name of the show. It's called Being Mad at the Internet. And the idea is generally when someone talks about something online, related to something online, uh, they'll be accused of being mad at the internet, right? Like they're mad because something happened in some way or another. And, and the, the concept is that the anger is misplaced or uh, is futile or is whatever. Self-reflection is due rather than being mad at the subject matter or the, the person speaking or whatever. You're misplacing your anger, bro. Uh, don't do that. Now, interestingly, um, a person who's increasingly mad at the internet is is actually Josh Moon. Um, and I don't think people are calling him out on it. But that said, uh, the other day I contacted Josh, as I've done frequently over several years, uh, have direct messages with Josh, semi-regular basis. Um, someone I, I consider a at least a working relationship. And I've, I've talked to him several times about any number of subjects. Now, sometimes some people would say something about me. And uh, sometimes like Josh might repeat that thing or whatever. And we'll get into why in just a minute. Um, Josh might say that thing. And when something is said about me that isn't true, uh, especially by or in relation to someone that I know, what I will typically do is reach out to them and say, hey, uh, I just want you to know, like, I'm, I'm not mad about what was said or whatever, because what am I going to do? Police everybody's fucking speech. I just want you to know, as someone that I know, that this thing is not a real thing. Like, that's not true. So just FYI. Uh, and sometimes they'll ask me why, sometimes they won't. And I'm like, look, dude, uh, we talk. We have some level of relationship through this weird internet thing. So I just want people that I know to know that that's not a real thing. Like, you can talk to me about it if you want. I'll, I'll tell you all the details, but that's not real. Uh, other stuff, very often real, doesn't matter. People can be critical of me. I don't, doesn't bother me all that much. But when something's just downright false, I'll tell them. I won't make a big stink about it online. I won't go public with it or whatever. Uh, I'll just tell the person. Fine, people get things wrong. No big deal. And I've done this a couple times with Josh because he has repeated shit that is frankly not true. Now, 
again, the man at the internet rule says you cannot talk about these things. You can't. It doesn't matter if you talk about them in jest or with mirth or good nature. Uh, if you do, you're mad at the internet, you're addressing it, you're coping, you're seething, whatever. Fine. Cheers to you. But again, I will tell personal relationships who I believe I've built up a level of trust and understanding with to say, hey, this, this isn't this isn't real. If you have any questions about it, cool. If not, just wanted you to know. Importantly, you don't ask people to make corrections or whatever. You just say, I just want you to know. Because you don't want people you have a real relationship with to think poorly of you based over something that's not true. Um, people on the internet, like generally, you can't change their opinions. You don't have enough credibility with that person. Even if they like watch your show or whatever, you can't go out and do it. Uh, so this has happened a couple of times over the years with Josh. No big deal. Um, I started to notice something though. I started to notice a pattern with Josh and it wasn't actually related to me. Uh, most importantly, it, it was related to Drexel was the most obvious. He has done it to me, but not recently, not recently, but he's done it to Drexel very recently. And I saw an opportunity. I said, you know what? I see a deficiency in how Josh analyzes pe people and situations. And that is, he seems to have a general problem understanding social cues. Now, the joke about this is it's autism, right? He's autistic. That's the joke. The reality is, I don't know if he's autistic or not. I, I don't know if I could safely label him autistic. I'm not a fucking doctor. But the reality is some people look at things in a very concrete manner and they miss social cues, they miss context, they miss history. They sometimes miss the idea that a story is comedic or a story is historical and they'll apply it currently. And I noticed this with Drexel. Josh's opinion of Drexel seems to be based on historical stories being present conditions. And so I reached out to Josh, I said, hey, I, I noticed something that you do. You have a deficiency in how you analyze people in situations. And a lot of people on Kiwi Farms do too. I can't talk to them, but I can talk to you. And I'm just letting you know that you seem to interpret things that might be a story as real, like as current, as a thing. But sometimes people will tell a story, and usually the context is obvious to normal people, that it's a story of the past. And you seem to think it's a story of the present. So... Here's the thing I've noticed. I just want you to know, because if you do it to Drexel, and if you've done it to me, maybe you're doing it to other people, and maybe your analysis of other people is, is not necessarily correct. So just keep that in mind. And he says, I, I, I don't like Drexel, and you can't make me like Drexel. I'm like, Dude, I, I don't give a shit if you like Drexel. I'm not trying to convince you to like Drexel. Drexel doesn't care either. I, I, don't, I don't care if you like him. He's like, well, you can never convince me that he's good. And I'm like, I don't want to. This is an example where I know the person in question. I know the facts underlying some of the claims and ideas that you have about them. I'm just letting you know that this is a thing you do. You can dislike Drexel all day. Uh, please continue. It's funny. I don't speak for him. This is just an example I can give you because I've noticed it. So there you go. For your own purpose. He's like, why are you telling me this? What do you want me to fix? What do you want me to retract? I'm like, Josh, I don't want you to fix or retract anything. I don't want you to do a thing. I'm just telling you an observation I have had as a comrade. Because you comment on other people. And if your commentary is deficient, if your facts are deficient based on your inability to understand this thing. Maybe you're getting things wrong. I don't know. You seem to be in this case. So maybe you are in others. You, why do you want me to like Drexel? I don't, I don't want you to like Drexel, Josh. I, how the fuck do I get around this? And I told him, I said, you're acting like a sysadmin where I'm coming to you with a problem that I want rectified. I'm not a piece of code, Josh, and you're not a fucking computer. This isn't a correction retraction thing, man. I'm just telling you an observation. Why are you telling me this? I'm like, I don't know. Cause you, you're like a friend or whatever gay label you want to put on it. Like 
we're homies. It's like, well, it's like, I understand you're under increased scrutiny because of your associations with me, but you have to understand I, I can't appear biased towards you. So therefore, I have to comment on you because you're associated with me, which tells you immediately something you've known for anyone who's known Josh knows him this for a long time. Josh is highly manipulable because of his principles of being neutral. Anyone can send him anything about someone he's associated with and he feels compelled to address it. He must address the thing. He's because of his principles and his inability to discern rational human behavior, he's highly influenceable and manipulable and controllable. He's beholden to the audience he has created. And they know it. And in some ways he does too. So, the funny aspect of this is that uh, in, in a desire to not be influenced by people he knows, people he doesn't know, get to have control over what he does, says, and thinks. And so when you tell Josh that he has a deficiency in his reasoning, his rationality, his observation, he takes it as an attack when it's not. He takes it as an affront. He takes it as you being offended at something he's done or said. No. Josh has said a bunch of shit about me. Some of it's true. Some of it's not true. I've never been mad at Josh about that. Ever. Look, it's the internet, man. You get to comment about whatever. I will tell him personally. I'm like, hey, Josh, uh, this is the thing. It's not true. Sorry. Like, I just want to let you know. And he's often asking, uh, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to retract it? Do you want, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to kick someone off the board? I'm like, no. What the fuck are you talking about? I just want you to know. That's it. That's the end of it. Please do not. Uh, in fact, one time I brought up that I thought the rules on the forum uh, were not being enforced properly. And he's like, who? What's the name? What's the name? Wh who do you want me to kick off the board? I'm like, Josh, I don't want you to kick anybody off anything. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm just making an observation. I don't, you, you again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a person reporting a problem with software. But he sees it that way. And so the interesting thing is he goes on his show, his show Mad at the Internet, and he complains to the Internet that I had a conversation with someone I, I have conversations with on the regular. I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, he sounds really angry, and he sounds offended, and he sounds jilted. And I laughed. I sent him a message laughing today. I was like, wait, you felt compelled to share a conversation? And you still think I want you to like Drexel? This is hilarious. And he's like, your conversations with me are infantilizing and insulting. <laughs> Who's mad at the internet now, Josh? You're being weird. Why are you doing this? We've always had candid discussions for years. But this one was a bridge too far, I guess. I don't know, man. Uh, he's, he's a silly guy, and I, I fucking feel bad about it. Because look, I'm an asshole. I'm divisive. I'm goofy. Uh, I tell jokes. My life is a weird thing. And um, people send him stuff about me that he feels like he needs to talk about with regularity. Okay. I've never asked him not to, by the way. I have never once asked Josh not to talk about me or to talk about me in a different way. I have never fucking asked. Let's be very goddamn clear on this. I have never asked Josh to take a single thing, even the grossest, nastiest false statements about me off of Kiwi Farms. I've never asked him to remove my docs. I've never asked him to remove a single fucking bit about anyone or anything. And I never fucking would. When he asked me who he needs to remove from the board, when he asked me what thing he needs to retract and correct, I have never, ever given him a shred of it because I don't do that. I don't ask people to issue retractions or corrections except one time. It's not to Josh. 
That was about someone who flat out fucking lied about something really disgusting. That's it. But people getting things wrong, interpreting things wrong, uh, coming to wrong conclusions and saying really horrible stuff about me, it's part of the game, baby. That's what you do. That's how online works. That's how Kiwi Farms has always worked. And I would never ask him to compromise that. I never have. No matter what, I, I, I don't think he's ever said I did, by the way. But the inference that he takes and what, what apparently the impression that he got is I want him to remove something. I do not. We've talked about this on my show. He does not remove stuff. He doesn't, unless it's like a court order to remove something, which doesn't happen very often. And I think that's good, despite the fact that I'll disagree with a shitload of stuff that's said about me. So I don't know why he suddenly thinks I'm changing tunes or why he suddenly thinks that I want him to do anything. I was just talking to a person. Uh, he misrepresented the conversation. I don't think he did it maliciously, by the way. And I, I kind of think it's funny. And if anybody wants to know, uh, was I messaging him from the shower? Yeah, absolutely. Don't you text in the shower? If not, what the fuck's wrong with you? That's a bunch of time. It's a bunch of time. Uh, was the whole conversation in the shower? No. <laughs> no, it didn't start in the shower. Didn't end in the shower. But I did need to take a shower. Uh, so I did. Which is funny to me. And that's why I told him. I thought it was hilarious. Like, Josh, I'm just texting you from the shower, man. Calm down. That was fucking funny. Uh, you may not. That's okay. Never asked anybody to laugh at my jokes. But uh, but yeah, if you want to know that, if that's a, if that's a thing that's weird to you, uh, cool. I'm a weird person, and I'm okay with that. Um, but here here's the ultimate conclusion on Josh, and I've seen this with several of his friends. Several of his friends, Josh has been manipulated because he's terrified of his own board and his own audience. Because he has set up a place. He's set up a place that if you let it, can destroy you. And he knows that. And he is terrified of being destroyed by his own people. His people. They're not his people, right? But he looks at it. He looks at the weaponization of Kiwi Farms, which is relatively new. Relatively new. Um as it's grown and he goes, fuck, fuck, because Kiwi Farms is close to destroying itself. He's having trouble hosting it. He's having trouble keeping it on the normal internet. He's terrified of that. He's terrified of what they'll do to him. He shouldn't be, by the way, but he is. And so he lets himself be manipulated by people who have no concern or care for him or his well-being. But they don't like someone, and they know Josh, standing by his principles of neutrality and unbiasedness, will feel like he needs to talk about something. And let me leave you with one thing Josh said to me during this particular conversation. He says, uh, Nick, you and I are different. You believe in the concept that one person who is guilty or who is not guilty, being found guilty, is an affront to justice. Sufficient to say that we need to be cautious about the guilt of people, that they need process. He says, I disagree. He says, I think, I think that punishing the guilty is so important. He, we were talking, let me, I don't want to misrepresent the context. We were talking in the context of pedophilia. He says, I think the punishment of the guilty on pedophilia is so critical that I am comfortable with innocent people being wrapped up as a result. And that's a concept that will always be fundamentally different between Josh and I. Is I think the wrongfully accused is the greatest injustice on the planet. Because a government takes someone and with wrong information deprives them of liberty, life, and property. Someone who did not do something. And I don't think there's a greater good argument sufficient to say that an unjust prosecution 
is justified by someone else's just prosecution. But other people can have that perspective. It's fine. But it's critical to understand the thought process of someone who says, the punishment of the thing I don't like is justified in incorrect information being applied to someone wrongfully because the thing I don't like must be punished, even to the deprivation of someone who is not guilty. And that should tell you a lot about Joshua Moon's analysis and approach to the subjects with which he discusses, which is the entire thing I was trying to talk to him about. Is that Josh, you are misunderstanding facts. And that misunderstanding is leading to incorrect conclusions. And he took that as me trying to get something removed or change his opinion on a person. I don't give a fuck who Josh likes or doesn't like. I tell any friend the same thing. And that's why I said yesterday that Josh is the most punished man on the internet. He is so punished by what he has created and by those who hate it that he will, to a fault, deprive himself of people, deprive himself of allies, of comrades, of whatever. And for the record, I 1,000% forgive Josh for any slight I perceive or anyone else does. I would talk to him today, tomorrow. I think it's funny because I see, I see the flaw glaring that Joshua Moon, the person judging people for being mad at the internet, got so mad about a private conversation that no one on earth knows about that he had to go complain to about it on his show. Josh, reassess yourself, buddy. Come back. You can be critical of everybody on earth, me especially. It is what it is, man. But you need a little reality check from time to time. And I'll be the guy that does it. Cheers to you, brother. I 100% respect the fight. And all I was trying to do was to a friend speak into something I saw that was defective in how they were fighting and hope they could correct it, not for my benefit or anyone else's that I know, but rather the general benefit of people you talk about. Because it is a flaw, man. And it's a glaring one. And it's becoming more and more apparent as you are more and more manipulable by the people you fear. And that is the viewership of Mad at the Internet and the users of Kiwi Farms. Don't be afraid of them. They're just people gossiping. That's your advice to everybody else. Now heed it. Because right now you don't. All right. There we go. That's that. And I'm sure uh, that'll be clipped out. I'm sure it'll be taken. I'm sure people will be pissed off. But you know what? Sometimes the fucking truth needs to be said. And uh, a bunch of people are scared to say it, unwilling to say it. They don't want to invite the ire. Sorry. You got to do it. You got to say it sometimes. And uh, I would I've never talk about a conversation I had privately with Josh. Uh, he did. And, and so, of course, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, especially since the way he represented it wasn't accurate. And that was the issue. So if you're like a, a Josh guy and you, you're really mad at me, um, cheers, adios, uh, whatever. You can have whatever opinion you want. I don't care. Um, I've never held back on saying something that I believe. And I won't start because of who it is. Arclight Redux says, sending someone drunk DMs in the middle of the night and calling them autistic tends to be antagonistic, Nick. Uh, two issues. Wasn't drunk on the DMs. And the middle of the night is the middle of my day. 
Uh, I go to bed at five in the morning. Um, I was talking to Josh, who's in Europe uh, at 11 my time. I didn't actually think he was awake yet. I sent him a message. He responded. He kept talking to me. So I thought that was fine. Because when I talk to someone, they respond. I, I don't see an issue with that. But uh, like, oh, he was, he was texting me at 11 or midnight or whatever. Yeah, that's when I'm awake and to have time to talk to people. Like, that's my day. And Josh knows that. So why do you think he tried to make it weird that I was talking to him, which would be if I was doing a show, when I start my show, knowing that I have six hours of being awake after that. And also when he would be getting up in the morning, why would Josh want to make that weird? Why would that be strange? For reference, the time I texted Josh would have been three and a half hours ago today, if it was today. But yeah, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't intoxicated in any way. And again, it was a friendly conversation. Um, it was a little trying at times, like when he wasn't getting it. And I was like, how do I fucking explain this to you any differently? Because he got so hung up on the fact that it was Drexel. And so I tried to take Drexel out of it and propose a hypothetical. Uh, like, this is the thing, Josh. It, it's, I don't give a shit. If you like Drexel, hate him all you want. It's fun. I'm not his mouthpiece, man. But cheers. Again, uh, like I don't I don't know how to say this. I, like I don't know how to do it. You can either not address something and leave it unsaid and let the other person's story be the only words on it, or you can talk about it. The interesting thing of the internet is anything involving Josh or Kiwi Farms, if you talk about it. You're mad. Even if you laugh, even if you joke about it, it doesn't matter. You are mad. You are coping and seething. If Kiwi Farms or Josh talks about it, they are always laughing. They're never mad. Go read some comments. Listen to Josh. Find out if they're mad or not. Sometimes they are. They're not laughing. They used to laugh a lot more. They're laughing a lot less. Call a spade a spade, even if the spade is a big, scary monster. I don't know, man. Again, I know that's going to piss some people off. I know it's going to piss people in my own audience off. Sorry. Uh, I don't know what to say. If, if someone says something incorrect about you, at some point, at some point you have to... You have to tell it. I tried to address this privately with Josh, by the way. His response was very, very not mad at the internet. <laughs> so funny. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, right? Like, I, I talked about it. Um, so fucking funny to me. Like, I'm like, Josh, you're, you're still hung up on it. Like, he's legitimately angry at this conversation. I was like, all right. Okay. Uh, sorry, man. I love you. I still do. I don't mind. I told people, I, I've said this forever. I, I don't burn bridges with people. They, they'll they burn them with me and that's okay. And maybe I like cause it. I'm not sure. But I rarely will disassociate. Uh, people can insult me. And and by the way, Josh has spread some pretty fucking vile rumors about me uh, and, and, and quote unquote address them on his show. And sometimes to his credit, he'll do it in passing. He like mentions it and moves on. Because you can tell when he doesn't seem to give credence to something. He'll mention it and move on. Cool. Uh, I don't mind. Like, what am I going to do? Uh, don't talk about me. Uh, I need you to guard my reputation. That's gay. Uh, and again, never, never, never have I asked him to guard my reputation. Because I know the answer, right? He would not do it. And people have asked him to do shit like that in the past. He says, no, and I agree. That's not his role. He's not my, my speaker. He's not someone that I would ask to defend me in any way. When you talk to Josh, you know what you get. You know, absolutely. So for him to like 
we've had these discussions a hundred times and for him to suddenly think I'm trying to get him to correct something about me or someone else is weird to me. It's baffling. And I think he's very stressed out over the state of Kiwi Farms and his work, which I sympathize with. I, I wish I had answers for him. I don't. But I sympathize with the sentiment. It sucks. It sucks when the thing you built is uh, not able to be placed. It sucks when the thing that you built, that society is increasingly decided needs to not exist. Because of course it's free speech. Of course people get to gossip about shit. Of course people get to be wrong and right in equal measure. And of course they should have a place to do it. Restrictions on speech are bullshit. And private restrictions on protected speech are bullshit. I don't know what's getting to Josh about that. It doesn't matter. Like, again, if Josh reached out to me tomorrow, I would answer him jovially and in the same way I always do. Even that one time when he said I didn't answer him, but I did. But a technological glitch seemed to impede that answer. But even then, of course, water under the bridge, guys. Uh, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know why he felt compelled to like talk about this and why he thought it was like super weird that I would have a chat with him. But he did. And he went on his show and talked about it. Because he's not mad. <laughs> calm down, buddy. Uh, and calm down everyone else. Uh, it's, it's, it's such a silly thing. The internet is a weird place. But it's a place that we all are stuck in. Uh, Bill, does, why did you lie to Josh about what you said about Monty? I, I didn't lie to Josh about anything that I said about Monty. Everything I said about Monty, by the way, is part of the public record. And everything I've said to Josh about what I said to Monty is truthful. I think Josh thinks I left the bit out. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to hide what I said about Monty. It's all in the lawsuit. And that's uh, all in all my videos. And I've talked about it 50 times, but whatever. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.